Dear Diary, My name is Chloe. I'm 10 years old, and this is my story. I live in Stratford, a small town in Canada near Toronto with my parents. I'm currently going to a school here in our city, but next school year, I will have to go to a new school. Then, I'm going into the fifth grade. Actually, I am very happy, but my mother doesn't think so nice. She's always worried about me. And as much as I try to take her worry away, I just don't know what to do. But that was not the only change in my life. It's time for bed, darling. Yes, I'm already in. Mom? Mom? But that was just the beginning of the story. Boys in elementary school are the worst kinds of people. In my old school, there were a bunch of gross kids always doing something awful, like stepping on ants or throwing sand at each other. Now, in this new school, they're a bit tamer, but that doesn't mean they're not jerks. Most of them always try to act like they're the best in everything. Like they try to impress nobody and everybody all the time. They also hit each other a lot. I think the first couple I heard of was between this girl, Charlotte, and a boy almost a year older than her. It was pretty calm in sixth grade, but as soon as I got to seventh grade, this couple's thing spread like wildfire. I always think my friends and I are a bunch of nerds, mutually knowing that, yeah, we have no shot at this. But it's fun to hear gossips and whatnot. Eventually, though, the fire catches us too. In a good way, though. Tom and Lucy said they're dating now and I think I smiled a little too much when I heard them tell me. But whatever, we're in ninth grade already, and I never ever cared about a relationship for myself. But now that two of my best friends are trying it out, I'm a bit jealous. Emma and I often talk about boys now. I'm not sure why. I feel like it's wrong, but it can be fun. This talent scout that visited our school, Jack, is a big part of our discussions. He's about the hottest dude I've ever seen, but he's also 20-something. I still get pretty tongue-tied around him, which is weird and probably affects the quality of my work. I think that for the entirety of 10th grade, I was looking for someone myself, but every boy from my school was just not it, I guess. I never found someone I feel connected to on that level until this beautiful post-16th birthday summer. His name's David, and he's an artist as well. I met him at a gallery for an art competition I went to. He's many things, but one thing you'll notice straight away, he's got some class. He's very kind and well-mannered, but he's also not shy. So like an impossibly perfect combination, confident but not presumptuous. Can you believe it? I think he's interested in me too. We start going out and things are looking great. I'm under a lot of stress, but David is the sweetest guy in the world and always makes me feel so much better. I'm glad I found him. One time, exactly three months after we started dating, he took me to this special restaurant at one end of town. It was no regular diner though. The entire thing was a Ferris wheel and you basically rent a cell where you get served food beforehand, then have 45 minutes to talk, eat and do whatever you want while riding around in a gigantic wheel. It's one of these things where it's either fantastic or a total failure. It was amazing. It was super romantic, and honestly, I didn't even know I needed it. There's something so intimate in eating, discussing, connecting to someone while you're 300 feet high in the air. We kissed when we were exactly on top. No one could watch us from beneath or above. It was the best thing ever. I wish we could do more of these, but the 11th grade is so tough. 
and neither of us has any time. Emma and Lucy are happy for me, nagging me about how in love I am. Maybe I am in love. I don't know. I like David. After what happens with my father, though, I don't see David for a while again. I want to, but I can't stand it. I'm not sure why. It's like I'm forcing the distance between us. David doesn't deserve this. We were happy not too long ago. It's not fair that just because I can't handle something in my own life, that means he has to go through the difficulty of bearing with me as well. It's only during summer when I understand why I couldn't talk to him. I think it's because I was vulnerable. I was at my most narrowed down state, and I couldn't allow anyone who I love so much to see me like this, to feel me like that. I didn't trust him. I didn't trust my friends, and I didn't trust myself. David and I are better now, though. We're both in the last grade of high school, so we only need to get through this. Then hopefully, we can both go to college together. We try to go on dates more often. He always tries to spice things up and make sure we never get tired of doing the same things over and over. Sometimes it ends up being a mess. Like the time we tried to go to a laser tag place. Most times, it's very fun. For example, we went bowling one night, and I think we found a whole new hobby that we both love. David helps me rebuild. I feel like I was torn apart after last year, and I'm so happy to have someone like him to keep me together. Sometimes, when we talk, I look at his eyes and think about what's going on in his head. How can he bear me? How didn't he leave me already? And other times when we're together, all alone with our breaths completing one another, I think the opposite. We're perfect for each other. It's insane luck that we found one another. I love him. Eventually, I'll tell him that. And he tells me he loves me too. And that's it. That's love. When we have each other and we don't need anybody else. One of the worst things in my old school was all of the dorks. That's what my friend and I called them. I'm not sure exactly how we classified someone as a dork, but there was definitely a group of kids who were all part of that category. We never did anything to them, but they always came after us after school. I tried keeping away, and since I was faster than them, I usually got away. They didn't hit me, luckily, though I half hoped they would, just so I can tell the teachers. In this new school, however, it's worse. I don't even know anybody, so I'm pretty much alone in this. They hate being called bullies, so I started using that word instead of dorks. They pick up sticks from the streets and then chase people around with them. Though I think they like to pick on me specifically more than other kids. I'm not sure why. I don't even know their names. There's this group of girls which I tried to talk to, but I guess they're bullies too. They told me they want to hang out. Then, during break time, they put sand in the back of my shirt. That was mean. It takes me ages to clean it. Sixth grade isn't as bad, though. Mainly thanks to Emma, Lucy, and Tom. I think the bullies don't really pick on kids who have friends because they're scared of an all-out war. Sometimes we toy with them by running super fast by the garden near the school. They always hang out there. Middle schoolers are the worst. Just when I thought I was at the top of the food chain because I'm at the highest grade of elementary school, these jerks come in and ruin it. I didn't know it, but they hit Tom almost every day after school, and he never talked to us about it. So I talked to Emma and Lucy, and we decide to strike back. We didn't tell Tom. On the last day of elementary school, we prepared about five water guns plus a small half-working toy BB gun Emma got from her dad. Each of us had two weapons. As soon as we saw them touching Tom, we jumped in to help. 
I think we gave the bullies a heart attack. They ran away so fast that I don't even think they saw our faces. Tom took the toy BB gun and shot one of them in the butt as he ran away. It was hilarious. Seventh grade sucks when it comes to bullying because the girl from fifth grade is back. She was the leader of that girl's group, which always picked on me. I now know her name is Charlotte, and she pretty much has the whole school at her command. She doesn't hit or do anything physical, though. She's a brat. That's what Emma told me. She likes to spread false rumors about people or turn friends on each other. A few months into elementary school, and Charlotte already tries to do this on me. She stole my pen and now tries to blame it on Lucy because she knows we had a small fight. When Lucy and I found out, we decided to prank her. We pulled a fake police call about a stolen pen, and that scared Charlotte straight. I didn't talk to Charlotte again for a while, but now when we grow friendly before 8th grade was over, our friendship feels like it's saving me from bullies. I'm not sure why, but nobody picks on me anymore. I think the only real bullying happens again at the end of 9th grade, after I broke my arm. I didn't think people would actually make fun of me for it, but they did. There were a lot of insults and mocking, but luckily no one hits me or anything like that. The invasion of mobile phones sucks because half of the time people call me names and I don't even know who they are. One time I came to this girl's birthday party wearing a t-shirt with the school symbol by mistake. Nobody dared to talk to me at the party, but afterward I got about 20 anonymous messages from people calling me an idiot and, well, some other names. I felt really down after it happened, so I didn't talk to anyone about it. Now, a few months later, Emma found out about it while using my phone to call her mom. I was really embarrassed when I noticed she saw those messages, but she started laughing at some of those things they wrote. Eventually, I joined her. She showed the messages to Tom and Lucy, and they laughed as well. To be fair, when you look at what bullies say when you're with your friends, Everything seems like a joke. High school as a whole feels like a huge pile of bullies, though nobody's sure who's against who. The boys laugh at my drawings, and I think some of them are trying to compliment me, but it definitely doesn't work. The girls mainly joke about how I dress. It's awful, and I can't even leave the house anymore without thinking about what they'll say. Every time I don't come in dressed like a supermodel, they all poke their eyes at me like I'm some weirdo. I stopped minding them by 11th grade. I used to be annoyed by bullies, but now in my last years of school, I think I see them in a different light. There will always be bullies, people wanting to bring me down. I was never sure why, but I guess this is just how things are. They don't affect me much anymore. I learned to ignore them and move on. And now more than ever, I know that's the best way to deal with them. My dad is probably the best guy I know. He's got this cool round hat that he always wears when he's in Stratford. He always knows everything, like everything. I don't think there's anything he doesn't really know. I keep asking him weird questions to challenge him and he always has the right answers. He's in the military, that's what my mom says. I don't know why, but he barely talks about it when he's home. He's away most of the time because he fights bad guys and protects us, according to mom. It really sucks that he's away, but I understand. I want to be protected. Mom said that he's not only protecting us, but he's also protecting everybody in town and the whole country. I don't understand why other dads don't do it. I mean, why can't he do something at home? Before we moved out to Stratford, he told me that this new city is much better and it's gonna be awesome. I hope that's true. My dad never lies. I miss him now. I feel so alone with all these new people, and I only know mom around here. I wish he was here too. He was only home for like a week this year. That's so lame. I talk to him on the phone all the time, but I really wish he was home. He told me that next year things should cool down, and he'll be able to come home for a while. I'm really looking forward to it. He said it's only going to be in a few months. 
Eventually, he's back. I know more people now, but I would still much rather hang out with him. He doesn't have a job in town, so he mostly does housework and takes me out for bowling or to see a movie together. I love this so much. I can't believe he's home for so long. He's been home for about three months now. He has to force me to go see friends as well because all I want to do is hang out with him. He bought me this small wooden boat and we went up to the river behind our house. We live right by the fields, so it's only a 15 minute walk. We go there a lot to put in the small boat and watch it go down the river. Then I run to bring it back. Before he left, he told me we should let it flow down the river that leads to the sea. Then maybe we'll see it again one day when we visit the beach, but I wanted to keep it. He's deployed again, of course, but I get to hang out with him in the summer after I turned 13. We went to the new amusement park, the one which I used to go to with friends. We also celebrated my birthday together. We went to play with the boat in the river again. I don't remember the last time he was home for summer. That's the best thing in the world. I really didn't want him to leave when he did. I wish he'll be back soon. We have a big vacation together over in Arizona after I turned 15. We had a great time together. I wanted to be home with him. He said he would be, but he had to go back to the army in the middle of the trip. So he took the plane to Afghanistan or wherever he needs to be. I was a bit upset. That's so unfair that they can just take him whenever they want. I've seen him for short periods now and then, but now he comes back for a few months in winter. He flew back in September, and I was happy to have him home. So much has changed, and I couldn't wait to show him and tell him everything. He wanted to see my boyfriend, David, face to face, but luckily it turned out okay. I was never more upset than I was when he had to go back. It's like an endless cycle. I just want him to stay. I genuinely just want him to stay where he is, to be with me and mom. I wanted to insist, but I know I couldn't. Now I regret it. We just got the news that his team took a hit in the fields. My dad didn't survive. He died out there. He won't come back, ever. It's really hard for my mom and me. I don't think I said anything for three days after we got the news. I locked myself up in my room and cried on the bed. On the third day, my mom insisted that I come out and talk to her. She says we have to open up with each other about how I feel. I suddenly felt safer with her, so I did open up. I didn't talk to any of my friends, not to David either. I got some texts from them. Emma's the one to text the most. I think they talked to my mom already because I've never talked to them about what happened, but they know. I only come back to school a week later, and that even is incredibly hard. Everyone looked at me when I walked into the school. I had to go to the bathroom and cry already in the first period. I don't know if I'll ever be the same, but some things do help. I know that he died protecting me and everyone else. I know that he was a hero, and he loved me. I know that I said goodbye. I said a proper goodbye. I did. He'd also want me and mom to move on. I'm really scared that something can happen to my mom. She's the only family I have left. I start talking to my friends again. I'm on the last year of high school and things were rough, but I'll get through this. I really miss my dad and I still cry alone all the time. We recently passed February again. It's been a whole year. Moving on is the toughest thing I'll ever do my mom says, but it's something that if I don't do, I'll never grow. I've just recently turned 18 and I graduated high school. Life moves on and I feel the worst for letting my dad stay in the past. But I know that sometimes letting go is the right thing. I got up for a walk. I went to the back exit and walked up to the fields. I used to play hide and seek or tag there with my dad. I started crying again it's like there's this ache in my chest that will never go away. I went over to the river. There was nobody there. No one is ever there. The kind of love between my dad and I is not one that can be separated by the barrier of life and death. He'll always be with me. I know that. 
I set the boat down, and it floated down the river. I didn't run to catch it this time. I think the first time I saw a mobile phone was last year. Our teacher got a phone call during one of the classes, and a funny tune started playing around the class. We all asked her what it was, and she said it was a cell phone. During the break, one of the girls told us her dad owns one too. We have a phone at home, but I never really see the use of a mobile one. My mom doesn't either. If someone needs me, they can just call home or talk to me. But, well, nobody really needs me either. I always thought mobile phones were supposed to be for busy adults only. I see some people on the street using them, usually people wearing suits and carrying brown bags. But today at school, I saw one of the girls playing with one of them. I wanted to ask her how and why she has it, but she was a part of Charlotte's group. Instead, I talked to my friends, Emma and Lucy. Apparently, they both really want a cell phone. I don't get them. We're just in seventh grade. Why should we need something like that on us all the time? But maybe there's more to it than I see. I think people are kind of addicted to it. Tom just got a cell phone recently, and we've been stealing it from him to play games every chance we get. It can be pretty fun. Finally, my mom gave me my own cell phone. It's right after summer, and I'm now 13. She said it's only for emergencies. It's pretty crap. It has buttons. Which is weird, because I saw a ton of ads for glass phones with no buttons. Still, I managed to install some games on it, and Emma and I take turns playing this funny ball game. You have to steer the ball into the holes so that it doesn't get pushed back. Most other girls have cell phones too, but they're pretty weird about it. All they do is write. I'm not sure why. Sometimes, I think they write to each other, even if they're standing right next to one another. Emma, Lucy, and I secretly laugh at them. That kind of miscommunication can be pretty funny. However, I kind of get what they're doing now. I think I first realized it after someone called me an idiot over text messages. It was listed unknown. They like to send messages constantly, even more so than meet up after school. I downloaded this app everyone's been using, and I saw Charlotte's profile there. I added her as a friend. I think Charlotte and I's relationship is pretty much grounded in the fact that we both have cell phones. We talk on the app all the time. There are other girls there too, so I think I'm making new friends. Emma and Lucy don't have the app. I tried to get them to download it, but they don't like it. Still, it's pretty fun to me. It feels like you can say anything you want, and nobody cares. I see Charlotte commenting on other people's profiles all the time, even if she doesn't know them. I'm not sure if that's bad. Charlotte and her friends seem to throw around words pretty carelessly, but they're pretty dumb, so I don't think I should take their behavior as a good example. Still, I tolerate it. Some people think I'm a jerk for doing even that, but they're my friends, so I have to live with it. I'm almost done with ninth grade now, and I think the whole cell phone craze is fading out. I stopped hanging out with Charlotte, so that probably eliminated any chance I had to get online popularity. I'm not upset though. I still use my phone for games, and I talk with my friends on it all the time. I hope to be over with my social media phase. It was all just a big pile of crap, and I would love to forget about it. In summer, I broke my phone accidentally by dropping it when biking. My mom wasn't too upset, probably because that phone costed less than what I eat in a day. She bought me a new one. This one has a touchscreen and a bunch more options. It's still nowhere as advanced as the ones that other girls have, but I don't care anymore. It's more than enough for me. Now, in high school, I find myself being much more productive with my cell phone. Since I'm doing more senior levels of math, I downloaded a few apps to help me with that. One of them draws every function I inset, which is a huge help. The other solves most of the simple equations I have, 
or at least sums them up to a bearable form. I think my teacher would probably not like the fact that I'm using my phone to solve easy things like these. I also use it to do what it was supposed to do in the first place, communicate. I talk with my friends all the time, and my mom can reach me in a second, any day of the week. It's also somewhat relieving by giving me a sense of safety, I guess, like I'm never alone. All in all, now I can't see myself living without a cell phone. I used to think it wasn't so important when I was young, and just a year or two ago, I was using it constantly for the wrong reasons. Now, I know what it's really meant for, and I'm happy with what I have. The world has gone online. I know that. That doesn't mean I have to be on social media for so long or hurt my friends. It just means I'll work with it how I want. And now I know how to do so. I like traveling, I think. My mom told me that when I was younger, I always screamed to go home whenever we were out for more than a day. I don't remember it. It was probably when I was like three. Last year during summertime, we took a trip to Niagara Falls. It's a few hours away from Stratford, so we packed a bunch of food and left early in the morning. I loved the car ride because grandma was with us and she played board games with me. The Niagara Falls themselves were pretty cool. I remember seeing pictures of them in class, so it would be pretty nice to come back and brag about actually being there. The water falling down was so weird. If you followed them with your eyes, you could almost imagine it as massive piles of sand falling down one after another. When I was little, we used to go on vacation almost every summer, even if not big. We do it less often now, probably because of my dad's constant deployments. This year, at the beginning of fifth grade, my dad said he'll be able to come back for a whole month and a half. So, we planned out a vacation in Germany for one week. Germany! This is like a billion kilometers away. We can't drive there because there's an ocean in between. We'll go on an airplane, and it's the first time I've ever been in one. I can't understand how my mom and dad just fell asleep during the flight. All I'm doing is looking out the window. How does this thing even stay up? It's huge. My mom told me it's much faster than a car. I heard a few kids crying in the back because they were scared. I think my mom and dad were worried I'd be scared too. I'm actually having fun. I like being in an airplane. Our trip to Germany is awesome. We landed in Berlin, which is the capital city. We visited so many shops in different places. We saw a wall filled with graffiti and I wanted to draw something on there too but my dad said I couldn't. Now, on the third day, we're going to Cologne. My mom said that we'll visit the chocolate factory here, and I can't wait. We only did it on our third day here, and it's so much fun. We have a tour around the place, and every time we reach a new section, our tour guide lets us eat one chocolate candy. They showed us how to make the chocolate into these shapes, and it's super interesting. Finally, we visited Munich. We saw a bunch of churches and a huge palace. My mom said that once kings used to live there. My dad wanted to go see a car museum, so we drove together over there. It was a lot of fun, but kind of boring eventually. I think this trip has taught me a bit of German too. I heard people talking in German all around and saw some signs with both English and German writings. So it helped me practice. Now that I'm back, I keep bugging my friend Emma with all these new words I learned. I enjoyed this vacation a lot. Now that I turned 15, we're finally going on another big vacation soon. My dad will meet my mom and me in Arizona and we'll go see the Grand Canyon. I'm really excited because we saw pictures of it in school once and I've always wanted to visit it. The flight is long, over six hours to be precise. I was still excited about going on a plane even though it wasn't as fun as I remembered it. My mom slept through it, and I thought about doing the same, but I ended up just drawing a bunch and watching a movie on my phone. We just landed, so we're going to the hotel now. My dad is late and will only land tomorrow when we plan to go to the Grand Canyon, so we decided we'll meet each other there. 
We talked a lot on the phone, and I can't wait to see him. Finally, today, when we went to the Grand Canyon, we met him and had a great time together. The Grand Canyon is enormous. It's so long and wide. I can't believe this thing is even real. I took a ton of photos on my cell phone. The next day, my dad said we'll have a fun day together. We watched a movie and then went to a karting place downtown and did a few laps. We also found a local horse race, and my dad gave me 20 bucks for gambling. I put it all on one rider, which definitely wasn't the most favorable. So the return would be three times the bet, and it won. I got back $60, and we went shopping with it. My dad added another 60, and I bought a sweet dress. Aside from the Grand Canyon, the whole trip was so much fun. I almost didn't want to go back. I could talk to my friends on the phone, although mainly through chatting. I told them all about this place, and they told me I have to bring gifts back. I knew they were half joking, but I looked around for something nice, and we bought a few packs of Arizona chocolate to bring back. My dad got a call halfway through the vacation, saying that he has to go back to work, so he won't come back to Stratford with us. I was upset, but on the last day, we had a perfect time together. This vacation was the most fun I've ever had, and I can't wait to do this again. Unfortunately, I don't think my mom can afford any more trips on her own. And after what happened with my dad, I doubt I'll ever have fun going on a family vacation again. I kind of miss it, though. Now I know that vacations are more than just get-togethers with your family. I used to like the attractions, but now I know that I need some peace and quiet now and then. And that's what vacations are here to provide. It's funny how I feel so changed, but at the end of the day, I still enjoyed vacations, and I still enjoy them now, and I can't wait to see what future ones will bring. Nobody cares about anybody in my current school. That's how it's been for four years now. It feels like a school for dummies, so I'm excited to see what this new school will bring. Well, here we go. It's time for fifth grade. I'm not sure if I'm excited. I used to be super pumped for every new grade, but I have no idea what the new school will be like. The school seems nice, I think. It has good decorations, and I really like the drawings. I wonder what the teachers are like. My old teachers always thought I was stupid. I think they didn't know how much ahead of them I was. The teachers here are fine, I guess. Everything is so easy, though. I would want to stay home and read something instead a hundred times over. Math is fun and pretty easy. My teacher, Mrs. Cobalt, thinks that it's a challenge for me. But I always give her the assignment before she even finishes talking. They don't give a lot of homework, but when they do, I finish it in class. History is a bit interesting, mainly because we don't do anything. We have art class, where everybody makes whatever they want. I started working on a pencil drawing, so every day during that time, I continue it. Well, it's fine. Not that bad so far. Fifth grade is easy and pretty short. They gave us 15 math questions to solve during the summer, but I finished everything on the first day. Sixth grade is the last year of elementary school. My new friend Emma is struggling with math, so I help her. A few of the other kids say I'm a nerd that likes school. I don't like school. I just don't struggle as much. During spring, this school has a special fair. They decorate every building and put out games and shops around the school. It's nice that they do it. I wish my old school did things like that. They now prepare us for the end of the year test with every subject we learn. It sounds scary, but I'm sure I'll be all right. Tom, Emma's friend, can't remember long division. I promised to help him, so he gave me a piece of gum in return. I think I can open a black market of things like that, selling private classes in return for candy. Maybe I'll do it next year, because I don't think the kids in this grade like me that much. As expected, the test is easy, at least for me. After this summer, I'm finally starting middle school, seventh grade, and wow, things are different. It's at a different place, a 10-minute drive from my home. 
We study physics now, and on top of everything else, history has tests now. History never had tests. Art classes are gone, unfortunately. My teachers are the worst. I think they don't like it when I already know what they're teaching. Some of them yell at me for saying the answer when I'm not supposed to. I don't think that black market idea would work anymore. History is awful. Why do I need to remember these names of people who died a hundred years ago? These things have no relation to us. It's not practical. I'm so confused. I got a B minus on my history test. That's the worst I've ever got on any test in my life. My mom doesn't care too much, but that's upsetting to me. I'll start studying more. In one word, middle school is a mess. Everyone is so loud all the time. They care about things they'd never cared about before. I'm glad I managed through seventh grade. I hope eighth grade will be somewhat different. The beginning of eighth grade isn't so hard. We have a new housemaster. He's called Richard. He seems pretty nice. He's younger than my previous ones, and he's one of the only guy teachers I've ever had. I think he understands me better. We have biology now, and I absolutely hate it. As if history wasn't enough. We have to remember different parts of living creatures, and I don't understand why. I would much rather draw instead of reciting what the powerhouse of the cell is called. The first half of that year is fine, though. It's better than seventh, in my opinion. This school's Halloween dance is super fun. Some of the spider webs they put on the walls as decorations stayed there until February. I think I'm falling behind a bit in biology, though. I was willing to study at the beginning of the year, but ever since I got a cell phone, I stopped putting as much time into it. Seriously, there are so many things I can do on my phone that are so much more productive than biology classes. This year's biology test was huge, and they told us we'd have to prepare for it a lot because it's a precedent for next year's final chemistry and biology test. Well, I got a C minus. My report card is like some unfunny joke. I have an A or an A plus in almost everything, but a big fat B minus in history and a C in biology. My mom's upset because I probably could have gotten more. Ninth grade is just annoying. As they told us before, we now have chemistry and biology in one class. That's like hell squared. It's not even New Year's yet. And my biology teacher caught me drawing five times. I used to fear to go to school, but now I feel awesome. I mean, my grades might not be as good, but they're just numbers and letters on paper. I feel more comfortable in school. My mom and my old friends aren't as happy. Eventually, though, as it nears summer and the end of middle school, I know I have to get back to studying. My friends are nice. They help me study, even though I haven't helped them in a while. If I don't get a good grade in this chemistry biology test, I'll be in big trouble. It's hard to write with my broken hand, especially since it was my good one. But Richard said he'll allow me to use my laptop in class for the rest of the year. I study so much in the final days. I stayed up the whole last night studying for it. Finally, the test is over. A week later, we have the results, and it's a B plus. I absolutely destroyed chemistry and biology. It's so fun to know I won't have to study this again unless I choose it in high school. I definitely won't, though. We're now starting tenth grade. I like that we don't have biology anymore, and thankfully, history is much easier. I feel like a lot of last year's stress will be gone this year. Which is awesome. Let me just say this: the kids in high school are nuts. Our class seemed fine when we first got it. It had a small wooden closet for kids who've yet to get their lockers to put their books. Within the first week, a few kids disassembled one wooden wall of that closet and started writing jokes on it. Yeah, I'm not kidding. It's now wide open on one side. Now that I'm in high school, I can go to the Halloween prom. It's better than what we had in middle school. This time, they put a lot of effort into making our building feel spooky. One day, a guy dressed up as a skeleton and ran through classes. 
I heard he got called to the principal's office, but didn't have any other clothes. So his parents took him home in that costume. We have three major tests this year. They're each 30% of our final grade. One in math, easy. One in physics, not so easy. And finally, one in history, the worst. My math test is supposed to be more complicated than the other kids because I'm in a special class. But so far, it seems pretty easy. Physics can be confusing, but it's mostly equations. As far as history, I do what I did every year, which is reciting things a thousand times until I remember them. Finally, I managed to get a good grade on all of these tests. Each year, the school does this end of the year party for each class. It's very fun. They get pizza for the whole class and we watch a movie, then have a mini party. I know 11th grade is hard, but I feel ready to roam. 10th grade was good. We have four tests this time around, same three as last year, with the addition of English. I like writing, but I don't like English class. It feels useless. I hope I can get through this test because there's a lot to remember. In our first English test, I studied a lot, so I got an A+. Plus. But now that this thing happened with my dad, I don't study that much. I don't feel like studying at all. I think it's going to take a toll on my grades, but I can't get myself to sit and recite things that don't help me whatsoever. What good is there to study physics, history, and even math? I know I'm not going to use any of it in my life. I want to draw, but there's no classes for that. The four tests go awful but my mom pulled some strings so that it won't affect me too much in my last year of high school. I didn't go to this year's last day with the party and the pizza and everything. I didn't even get my report card in school like everybody else. I stayed home and they mailed it to us. After summer, I feel a little better. There's just one more year of all of this. Then I can go to college. I know I need to maintain good grades if I want to get that scholarship, so I study a lot as well. Mostly alone, though. Well, I guess things haven't totally worked out the way I wanted in school, but the last year is better. Things are looking up, and I'm hoping for a better time in college. There's just one final test to go through. Then I can go on my way. And that's it. I finally finished the 12th grade with an excellent level grades badge, according to my report card. I know I should feel a sense of accomplishment, but frankly, I just feel like a huge weight was put off my shoulders. It's time to move on. I finished school. All of it. Feels good to say that. I was born on June 18th, right as summer break starts every year. I was always one of the younger kids in my class, but that was fine for the most part. This year, I'll turn 11. It's my first birthday in this new town and school. I can't wait already. Last year, my parents organized a small party with my class, as everyone does. I had fun, and most of the kids were nice because it was right before I left. This year, I don't think I want to do something with friends. I was really looking forward to the gifts, but I think I'll have to settle with what my family gives me because I don't think any of the other kids would come if I invited them. My grandma, Sarah, always gives me the best gifts because she's retired and I think she's rich. When I turned eight, she got me my first bike. They were pretty cheap, but I learned how to cycle using them. This year, she got me a new helmet and a pair of gloves. My parents got me a drawing board with like a million pages and a ton of colors. I love it so much and I think I already know what I'm gonna do most of the time this summer. Now, a year later, I'm about to turn 12. I've been talking about it with my mom for so long, and I think we're gonna do a party. I feel much more comfortable with my class now. I invited 20 people. Only one didn't come because she was sick. We watched a movie together and then ate a huge chocolate cake. I got a ton of presents, including a new basketball, my friends and I played with it all summer. Although my friends stayed with me for middle school, I still feel weird to invite my class to my 13th birthday this year. I'm not sure, 
so I ask my mom all the time. I think I might only invite Emma, Lucy, and Tom. My dad says he can make it for summer this year. That's it. I decided. No friends, just me and my dad. I celebrate the actual day with my mom, and my dad gets back home about a month later. He got me a massive box of chocolate muffins. I went with him to an amusement park, and we invited all of our relatives for a family dinner together. It was so much fun. I'll soon be 14, and I'm not sure if I'm going to do another party. I really wanted to last year, so I was thinking about it a lot. Emma keeps telling me I should do it, but that's probably because her birthday is always on Christmas, so she rarely gets her own party. I told her that if she promises to help me organize it, and if there won't be too many people, I'm ready to do it. I think Emma takes that a bit too far, though. She bought like 50 balloons and made a guest list and is walking around bakeries to find the perfect cake. And there's more than a week until the birthday. I'm a bit stressed because I want Emma's work to mean something, but I'm also happy because she's so excited. The party ends up being amazing. My parents were almost completely cut off. Emma wanted to do it all by herself. We were about 20 kids, and we had a really fun time. My dad called after it ended, and we had a long video chat together. Next year, during Christmas, Emma turned 15, so I returned the favor and made a huge surprise party on her birthday. I've never seen her that happy before. Now, I'm about to turn 15 as well, and my mom and dad said we'll go on a trip. We're supposed to meet my dad in Arizona and then visit the Grand Canyon. We'll also do other stuff with my dad. He promised me we'll find a bike race or a horse race to watch, as well as a movie. The gifts weren't that great this year, but that's fine. I was happy to be with my dad again. We returned a few weeks later. I'm 16 now and don't feel like doing much of a party anymore. I was barely looking forward to my birthday this year. Emma says I have to do something because of the whole sweet 16 thing. I think she's upset about this because both Tom and Lucy told her they weren't having their party either. The truth is, I don't think I'll have enough time this summer. I only remembered my birthday is coming up maybe a week before. My dad called to congratulate me on turning 16, and my mom still did something for me. She took me out to the movies and got me a few presents. I love the new headphones she got me, and I use them all the time to listen to music when I'm drawing. She also got me new bike gloves. My old ones were completely torn apart, so it was nice to have new ones. I didn't use them much, though. My 17th birthday is the first one where I don't get the usual happy birthday from my dad. I really miss him, and during these last school days, I was very sad, so I barely saw my friends. For my birthday, though, my mom got me a puppy. He's so small and cute, so I'm happy with it. My mom said it'll grow to be like five times the size in a year from now, so it's almost like a little baby. Finally, I turn 18 right as we finish school. I had a rough 12th grade, and reaching my 18th birthday feels like a significant milestone. I really wanted to do something to celebrate that, but I didn't need to. My friend Sydney planned everything out and threw an awesome party for me. I think this is the first time I drank alcohol in a party, and that's just because she brought about a hundred beer cans. I have to say, I had a really good time. My last birthday was awful, so it's refreshing to finally feel happy and celebrating again. I guess birthdays will progressively be more and more boring but it was fun to enjoy them while they lasted. I now know that what matters isn't that one day of the year or that next number I reach. What matters is the friends and people around you who are there to celebrate with you, to celebrate you. In my old school, I didn't have many friends. Some of the girls were nice, but it was mostly like a zoo of people. I didn't fit in. I was happy to move to a new place because it meant I could meet new people. But now, I'm scared to talk to anyone. I get tongue-tied every time I try to talk to someone. My mom really wants me to make new friends, but I think I'm fine on my own for now. Especially now that it's finally summer. I can do all the things that I love to do by myself, like riding the bike or drawing. One day, I went out to bike, and this group of kids chased me for some reason. They were pretty mean. They laughed at me and pushed my bike wheels so that I fell. 
They tried to steal my bike, so I started cycling away as fast as I could. They were really going after me. I was so scared. I managed to get around the corner before them, so I jumped into this house's garden behind the bushes. Luckily, they went past me and didn't notice me, and they kept looking all around. I kept quiet, but it was someone's house, and the girl came out when she saw me. She was really nice, though. She said I could come inside and lock my bike. Her name's Emma, and she says she knows these kids who chased me. They're a bunch of dorks from our school. I hung out with Emma again that summer. A lot, actually. She introduced me to Tom and Lucy. They're her friends. We all like to paint chalk on the street and ride our bikes. I like being in a group. School's way better that way, too. Emma is really nice, and so are Tom and Lucy. We play a lot together after school. We go to the same middle school as well, so I won't be alone. This summer, we all went to the new amusement park that just opened in town. My mom allowed me to go by myself, so we had a day to spend there together. It's huge and so much fun. We rode everything we could because the pay was just for the entrance. There was one thing we couldn't go on, which was the tallest roller coaster there. It's from age 15 and up. After we left the park, we all made an official vow to go back there when we're 15, all of us, and ride this thing together for the first time. There's a girl named Charlotte in my class. She used to be the worst in elementary school. Now, in eighth grade, we started talking more. We both have cell phones, and she showed me a lot of things I can do on social media. I hang out with her and her friends sometimes. Emma is jealous because I don't hang out with her as much. Tom told me I'm an idiot for talking to Charlotte. I was super mad. Emma said that I found new friends, so there's no reason to hang out together anymore. I'm so sick of them. I don't talk to them anymore. I hung out with Charlotte a lot. She's pretty careless most of the time, so it's not like she's a jerk. She could be a jerk to other people, but not to me, usually. Her friends are the same. They also put me so much higher on the food chain. Nobody messes with me anymore. They tend to go out late at night, though. My mom rarely agrees for me to leave after 8, even if it's not a school night. One summer night, I couldn't take it. They said there's an open party downtown, so I snuck out the window and took my bike, then rode there with them. It was not so much fun. It was super loud, and I didn't understand how they could enjoy it. I wanted to go home after 30 minutes, but I wasn't sure how to get back. Finally, when they wanted to leave, we rode back. I was riding around with my bike while I waited for them to get ready, and they saw I could do tricks with my bike. They asked me if I could jump off a slab. And I said yes, so obviously they wanted to see. It was late, but I knew this would make them like me so much more. I did the jump, all fine, and they cheered. But the momentum threw me forward into the road. A car hit my bike, and I fell off and went unconscious. I ended up with a furious mom and a broken right arm. The arm sucks. I can't draw. I'll be with this cast thing for at least two months. I was really upset with Charlotte, but she's being totally rude about it. Then, one day, she came up to me and said that I'd have to find a new hobby because I can't draw anymore. That's it. I don't want to talk to Charlotte anymore. On the other hand, I don't really want to talk to Emma either. We're coming up on that summer when we're all 15 and the amusement park would open again. I want them to reach out to me, but they don't. So instead, I just talked to Emma myself and told her what happened. I'm super lucky that Emma accepted me back so quickly. And a day later, I realized why she needed a friend. Tom and Lucy are dating! I was so happy to hear. I smiled for the whole day. I winked at them several times during class, and we almost lost it. It's the last week of school. Who cares? Finally, we went to the amusement park. It was a lot of fun. I was thrilled to hang out with them again. High school started, and our group joined Caleb and Sydney, two transfers. Sydney's father is also in the military, so we talk a lot. We generally have a lot of common ground. Caleb is, well, he's handsome, to say the least. Sydney told me they're just friends, but I think she's got a big crush on him. Tom and Lucy are annoying nowadays. They have relationship issues, and everybody hates being around them because they always argue. I decided to sit them both down and force them to talk like friends about their problems. 
It turned out okay. They both decided to break up, but on good terms. Hopefully things won't be awkward now. I spent less time that summer with friends because I was working on my art project. Emma was happy for me that I got a boyfriend when I talked to her after summer. I feel a bit bad for her because I know Sydney and Caleb are a couple now too, so she's the only one left alone in our group. I'll make sure to spend a lot of time with her too. I completely stopped hanging out with my friends after I got the news about my dad. It took me a while to get back to them, but eventually I did. I learned that I have to because aside from my mom, they're the only people I care about and the only people that care about me. On the last year of high school, I have a lot to complete, mainly for three art competitions I need to submit projects for. I work extremely hard. I don't hang out with my friends, but I talk to them a lot, which is good, I guess. When we near summer, these galleries in which my art is shown start, and I'm super nervous. However, I was happy to see Emma standing by my project every time. She came all the way to each gallery, even when it was two hours away from Stratford. She stood by me, smiling, supporting me. On the last one, Tom and Lucy joined as well, standing by my art like proud parents. It's crazy how much we've grown. Tom is growing a stubbled beard. Lucy is so tall, and Emma has long hair now. We're real adults. When we met six years ago, I never would have thought I'd see them like that. I don't deserve friends like this. Too kind, too charming, and too good. But we have each other, and I can never be grateful enough for that. Drawing is the best thing in the world. I will never understand why we don't all just draw whenever we can. It's so fun and relaxing. Anyone can guess fairly quickly that I like to draw. Very, very much. Our fridge door is filled with my paintings from kindergarten, and every year, many new creations join them. My mom never had an issue with that hobby until now. She says that I spend too much time drawing, and that I'll have a hard time socializing with other kids because of it. I have a hard time anyway. I don't think drawing makes a difference. Still, I stop showing her my paintings so often because nowadays she smiles and tells me I should show it to class or something like that. I like biking as well. I have a small blue bike. It sucks, but it's enough to ride around the neighborhood and behind it. I like to ride up a hill or a steep road, then go super fast all the way down. My mom usually doesn't approve so I have to promise her I won't do anything dangerous every time I leave on my own. I think the only hobby I ever had before that has to do with other people is playing ball. Back in my old school, we had a class in which the teacher would usually give us a soft volleyball and let us play dodgeball and stuff like that. I loved it, and I was pretty good at it too. Now, in sixth grade, we finally have ball games again. It's much more fun than I remembered it because I play with my new friends. It can be super funny. We always dominate the field, according to Tom. I'm usually one of the first picks for a team. I tried to talk to my friends about drawing, but it seems to me like I'm the only person in the world which is obsessed with it. I mean, Emma likes playing ball, Tom and Lucy love biking, but nobody loves drawing. I think they're tired of hearing me talk about it. I usually draw super big drawings that I work on for days. It's fun to pick up from where I finished yesterday every new day. Biking is also much more fun with friends. Now, in seventh grade, we're around much bigger kids, and they usually like biking as well. Emma, Lucy, Tom, and I ride our bikes near the fields at an empty parking lot. There are never any cars there, but I still don't tell my mom I'm going there. One day, we saw an eighth grader coming up really fast on a tall pavement slab. Then, jumping with his bike off it. I bet Emma and I could do the same, even though I never tried, and it turned out to be a piece of cake. I think I smashed a few bones in the process, landing majority with my front wheel facing forward, but it was worth it. Ever since I got a cell phone, I like playing mobile games as well. Emma is absolutely obsessed with them. I usually play with Emma during lunchtime, when most of the class is empty, 
She doesn't have a good cell phone of her own, but she always uses mine. Girls like Charlotte and her friends also like to play phone games, but they're mostly, uh, civil, I guess. I tried to play with them, but I think I get too competitive. My mom keeps suggesting I join a biking group. There's this team of people who go on trips together and sometimes learn how to do tricks. I saw them training a bunny hop once. I always wanted to do a bunny hop, but everyone in these groups is always boys. I also don't think I'd have much fun. I like to bike on my own or with friends, but when I lead, I feel like that slap jump back in seventh grade has opened up a whole new world for me. All I do this summer before high school is try to find more places I can make jumps off. I found this bike track with something that I heard other people call a table. It's basically a long and flat platform, a bit longer than the length of my bike, with two slopes on each side. So you come up real fast from one side, and the goal is to fully go over the table and land smoothly on the other side, or smash your face. I actually did, eventually. It's winter, and I rode my bike when it was pretty cloudy and dark. I missed the jump and my bike drifted off, so I planted my face on the asphalt. My thigh also got a good hit. I have a scar now. My mom says it'll eventually fade because I'm only 15. I finally found some place to use my drawing skills. I'm going to participate in this national competition next summer. A guy named Jack visited our school supposedly to look for talent or something like that. He said I had a good shot at ranking well in the competition. So now all I do is think about my project for summer. Drawing used to be a hobby, but now it's getting tiring. All I do all day is sketching drafts and ideas. I feel like the fun was taken out of it. Now that it's summer, I only have a month until the competition. So I pretty much draw all day long. It's going to drive me insane. I'm telling you now. Finally, I sent it in. The day of the competition was nice. It was pretty much a gallery. And a lot of the drawings were fascinating. I thought I had no chance, but I ended up taking second place. I'm super happy. Nowadays, in the last grade of high school, I draw more professionally. I want to get a scholarship for this art college and I can only get it if I submit and pass three pieces to three competitions. It's tiring to say the least, and it's eating up my time. Still, I'm determined to succeed and do my best. Eventually, I get that scholarship. I'm excited, but a bit scared about the future. My hobby has turned into my life. This is probably all I dream of when I was little, but now that it's real, it feels almost overwhelming. I guess hobbies partially define who I am, who we all are. I'm lucky to be able to study and eventually work at what I've been doing on my own for years, and I can't wait to begin. Good morning, darling. You have to get up. Mom? Yes? I love you very much, and I hope that you can let me go sometime. I love you too, but what are you talking about? You don't have to worry about me. Oh, I love you, sweetheart. I am happy to be a child. I'm looking forward to a lot of things, but I'm not in a hurry to get older. I can now understand why my mom is so worried about me and why I cannot take her worry away because I do not have that job. You have to accept some things, my mother and me too. One thing that will only become clear to me years later is the fact that I chose my own life and that the whole story is just one variant of many.